Hello guys, gals, and MBs. Welcome to another Robotic Bob Ross tutorial. Today we are going to make some generative shapes with the Particles GPU. It's a really simple technique that you can play with a lot. It creates these wonderful curves and movements. Let's delete everything. We are going to start by creating a grid and tops. And start with a constant chop. So that we can set our resolution for the grid. I'm going with 1280 by 1280. Throw down a ramp top. Drag and drop the resolution. 32-bit float mono. Copy and paste that ramp and change it to vertical. Drag those into a reorder. Input 1 red. Input 2 green. Blue 0. Change the pixel format of the reorder to 32-bit float RGBA. If we press the viewer active and press the V key on our keyboard, we can view the colors as points, and we see that we have a 1280 by 1280 grid. That goes between 0 and 1. Represented by the red and green channel. Neat. I want to center it around the 0, so let's bring in a point transform top. Under the Align tab align it by origin. In the X, Y, and Z plane. Under the Transform tab, scale it up by 4. Throw down a Null. Control B on the keyboard to open the palette. Under Tools, bring in the Particles GPU. Under Forces in the Particles GPU, bring the external, wind, and turbulence to zero. Where we are going, we don't need these. Change the material to line. In order to change them to points. Connect the null top to the first input of the particle GPU. And we can see our grid forming in the particles. Connect a keyboard and chop to reset the particles. Let's increase the amount of births and the amount of max particles in simulation. Let's close these borders a little bit. Turn the positive limit plane down to 2 and the negative limit plane up to negative 2. You can see how our plane is tightly hugged by the limits now. Let's connect the FURS output of the Particles GPU to a Null and to a Transform to create a background. Let's view this in the background. In the Particles GPU, turn the max particle size down to 0.3 and minimum to 0.2. Let's create a new camera. Under the Render tab in Particles GPU, drag the new camera into the field for the camera operator. In our new camera, 
Under View, set the perspective to orthographic and set the ortho width to 4. And I forgot, under Render and Particles GPU, set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Now we can turn off the display bounds in the Particles GPU. I changed my ortho width to 4.1, there is literally no need to do this. In the particles GPU, change the life variance to something high like 15, to avoid blinking. And there we have it. A nice grid of particles. Let's move over to the fun part. We are going to use the fourth input of the particles GPU component. Called optical flow. You don't need to follow along here, I'll just show you what it does. By connecting a constant top. If you give it red information, the particles move sideways, depending on if it is positive or negative information. If you give it green information, they move up and down. I'm so pedagogical. Okay, let's continue. Throw down a noise top. Drag and drop the resolution. And change the pixel format to 32-bit float RG. Monochrome off. Here's where a lot of play comes in. Turn the period and harmonics up. Offset to 0, and Amplitude 1. Connect it to another noise top. Period and harmonics up. Exponent a little down. Offset 0, Amp 1. Let's plug that into the optical flow input and see what happens. Oof, that was cool, but a little intense. Let's attenuate those values a little bit. I'm sure you could do some proper math here. But I just plug in a math top and under multi-add, multiply the signal by 0.001. Now, let's plug it into the fourth input of the particle's GPU. It looks like I forgot to turn off the monochrome in one of the noise tops. Let's change that. Now this is nice. Let's create a feedback after the render to see those paths a little better. After the null connect a feedback and a level top. Under post, set the opacity to 0.99. I also turned down the brightness to 0.999 and black level to 0.001. Put down an over top. Connect the render and level to it. And drag and drop the over top to the feedback to close the loop. Now this is very nice. Pause. I forgot to do something here, it is not necessary. 
But if you want a nicer result, you can go inside the particle's GPU and find the render talk. There you can change the pixel format to 32-bit float RGBA. Okay, we are back. When we change around in the noise, we can see the particles reacting, albeit a little slowly. Let's click on the particle's GPU and change the parameter called speed. I turn it up to 3. This effect is never going to be fast, but now it feels more responsive. Let's create some colors. Throw down another noise top. Set the resolution and pixel format. Connect it to a lookup. And plug a ramp into the other input of the lookup. Drag that into the second input of the particle's GPU. Now we can see that our particles take on the color of the noise. If we use the ramp, we can modulate the colors. These are fun colors. Let's create an automatic seed changer. Throw down a keyboard and chop. And set it to the 2 and 3 key on your keyboard. Connect it to account chop. And a null. Drag and drop the first channel to the seat of the first noise and the second channel to the seat of the second noise. Now when we press the 2 and 3 key, we see changes in the pattern. Nice. Let's throw down a constant chop, connect it to a speed chop, and a null. Let's use that to animate the noise. Dragging and dropping it in the translate. Fun! Thank you.
Here, I'm going to show you another thing you can do, I'm not sure I like it, but it's something. In the feedback loop, after the level, connect to transform top. Lower the scale slightly to something like 0.998. Now we get this ribbon look. And there we go. Remember to have fun with it. Play with the colors. Change all of the values around. Make some waves. Like, share, and subscribe. Ask questions in the comments. I become a happy robot when you comment, like, and subscribe. Cheers.